Hi everyone! Welcome to the Clicker homework video. Your homework champions for Clicker are Shamroy and myself, Taisia. In our web app architecture, the WebSocket server connects to the web frontend through WebSockets, and it also communicates with the actor system through actor messages. For the homework, we will be handling communication between the actor system and the web frontend by using a WebSocket server as an in-between. If you are curious, you can take a look at the JavaScript file and see what events are being sent to the server. This actor system will have game actors running the clicker game, and the data from those games will be sent all the way to the web frontend through the WebSocket server. For the homework, we will be using the Socket.io WebSocket library in order to handle messages and events. The library allows us to add listeners, classes with methods that are called when an event occurs, to our program. We can use the onConnection listener, which fires whenever a user connects, and we can even create our own listeners, which will listen and respond to any custom events received. In Scala, we can only create lists that hold a single type in them. For example, we can make a list containing ints, or we could make a list containing doubles, but we can't make a list with a combination of both. This is where JSON comes in. JSON is most commonly used when communicating between languages. Since our server and actors are in Scala and our GUI is in JavaScript, we need to use JSON to send data back and forth. A JS value is a type that you will need to import and consists of six types, string, number, boolean, array, object, and null. Here is an example of parsing JSON from the Friday, February 21st lecture. When we receive data in the form of a JSON string, we can parse the string and extract values at specific keys. We can indicate what type we want our data to be extracted as. Now here is an example of constructing a JSON string, again from the Friday, February 21st lecture. In this example, we are structuring our data in a way that we will later be able to parse through, so basically working in reverse. Remember that when we send our final JSON messages, we need to use a JSON.stringify to convert it into a JSON string. For the clicker GUI, here is a sample game state. You can use this as a reference for constructing and parsing JSON strings. When testing concurrent software, a lot can happen at the same time. We recommend students to use the debugger provided by IntelliJ in order to test and debug your code. The debugger will pause the execution of the program at breakpoints in sequential order. It will help you identify which lines of code are being executed first, and displays the values and memory addresses of variables at the time of execution. This is extremely helpful if you have multiple actors of the same type and you're trying to differentiate between them. In order to place a breakpoint, click on the gutter between the line number and the line of code, and a red dot will appear. In the GUI, you will only see integer values for the concurrency and cost. However, you must keep track of the exact currency and cost for each item. Do not do any rounding when calculating your values. To see the exact values of your equipment and your currency, you must write tests. Don't rely on the GUI, as it may not accurately detect bugs in your code. However, for testing the concurrency of two games being played at the same time, you may use the GUI to see if it works. Some other notes about Clicker. For calculating the idle income time, calculate the difference between the current time and the last update time to find the time that has passed. Then you can use that value to find the amount of idle income you've received. Remember to update the last update time. Also, if you are unable to open the HTML file from IntelliJ, you may need to find the HTML file in your computer folders and open it from there. So now it's time for a little demo. So once you get some implementation done in your code, you will be able to submit a username and then this page will pop up and you will be able to play your game. 
So here, let's click on the gold button and let's buy a couple shovels. And now when we click, it will increment it by a greater number than previously. So let's try to now buy an excavator. All right, so now that we've bought our excavator, we can see that the income per second is increasing. And let's try to buy a gold mine. And that's pretty much it. You can change which equipment you want to buy. You can construct your own Java or rather JSON strings. And you can change some code in your server to have it read different strings and have fun.